What is up, everybody? Um, oh, hmm, it looks kind of dark. That's weird. Whoa, the music is playing in the background. What the? <laughs> what on earth? Okay, hopefully that, <laughs> that was weird. Um, all right, sweet. So we're gonna talk about code coverage today. If you haven't seen a report, a code coverage report before, this is it. Um, and so what are we talking about when we talk about code coverage? Well, uh, we've got this project. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Just Cypress React Babel Webpack. Uh, this is one of the projects in testingjavascript.com. What? Um, so yeah, this testingjavascript.com is this really cool thing that I'm doing. Um, early bird starts on Friday. So sign up to get that. Um, early bird discount and updates on on the course um, so yeah it's gonna be great um, and this is one of the several projects that are uh, is featured in this course uh, or in this series of courses um, and I do talk about code coverage I show you how code coverage is instrument or, or how code is instrumented for coverage what it looks like and um, and and how it all works and then i show you the the code coverage report so i'll just give you a quick rundown of this uh, coverage report so we have this um calculator display here that is green and that looks nice we have 100 percent for everything and then we have this auto scaling text that is not green um, and looks kind of nasty we don't have 100 percent code coverage for everything like we um might want so um, what does code coverage even mean? What it means is we have some tests, auto scaling text, um, and these tests, they're like the, this project in particular is just about configuring tools and stuff. So the tests aren't really all that, that valuable here. Um, but when these tests are running, they are going to run some of our source code, right? So when we render this auto scaling text, it's going to come in here and we've got this auto scaling text class. We have a render method, and this is going to be run. Now we can see that it's run four times, and that's because it's run once here, and then we have tests for other components that actually use this, and we'll render it uh, there again. And so that's why uh, this render method's being run four times, but something that's not being run is um, all of this stuff after here, because the node is um, not established until after the component has mounted um, and and then re-rendered and so uh, we actually never get to run this code because <clears throat> because none of, none of our tests actually do that then none of our tests actually re-render the component um, and so that that could be a problem um, and then here we've got another another example right um, let's see it was here yeah, so um, this one, we don't even run the render method. There's no uh, test that actually uses the login form component and verifies that it, it's working. And so we get a lot of red here. Even the import statements aren't run. So these import statements could be trying to import files that don't exist. And we wouldn't um, be able to automate, um, wouldn't be able to like know that from our tests. Now, you'll probably want to have um, linting and, and you'll have a linter that can tell you or, or you'll have uh, typings and the typing can fail. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been sick for like two weeks. Um, get, luckily, you can't catch my sickness over the internet, so that's good. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's basically the idea of code coverage is you've got uh, this code that is your source code and you want to write tests for it and code coverage is the mechanism by which you can measure how much of your source code is run when your tests are running and that can help you know what um, tests you have yet to write so like we we need to write some tests for the login form um, and definitely need to write some tests for this calculator because it's not even being rendered anywhere um, and so and that can kind of inform our decisions. So what I uh, have seen happen on teams is they'll come in and they'll uh, like, often it's a manager that comes in and says, hey, we have to have 100% code coverage because then we'll know that we'll never break our application, right? So if every single line in our code base is run, then we know that we won't have bugs. Um, that is totally false. Um, so, and, and an important, aspect of understanding code coverage and using it effectively is understanding how 
uh, or what code coverage is telling you and what it's not telling you. So what is code coverage telling you? It's telling you that these lines are run. So uh, in the calculator, this file is actually imported somewhere during the test. These lines are run and they don't throw an error, okay? Um, and, and then it's telling us that this loading thing is not run. And so they could throw an error. We don't know. Um, our test can't tell us whether or not that's going to throw an error. Um, and also this, this default value of an empty string on this class name, um, we're always passing a class name. So that default is never being taken. And so we don't know what happens um, in the event that uh, the class name is not provided. Uh, so there, there are some things that code coverage can tell us. So what are the things code coverage cannot tell us? Well, code coverage can't tell us if we've accurately um, um, verified the business logic of our application. So, um, for example, excuse me, this calculator um, right here is, well, uh, yeah, code coverage itself can't tell us that the business logic is, is sound. Um, our, our assertions can, can verify that the business logic is good, but not code coverage by itself. So, for example, let's pretend that we did have coverage, or actually here we'll use the utils. So we do have coverage here. Uh, we're missing some coverage on that ternary. But um, even though this, um, this line is actually being run, there might be a bug in this regex here that isn't matching things properly, and um, code coverage can't tell us that. Our assertions in our test can tell us that, um, but code coverage by itself can't tell us that. Um, another thing code coverage can't tell us is how uh, much of our code base, um, or how much of our the valuable parts of our code base are being run in our test. So um, the the little bit that's missing here, that's, that's probably pretty important. Um, but we're, we're getting code coverage here and we're getting code coverage uh, right here. And like, yeah, sure, it's, it's important, but I would much rather have the logic of my code um, be tested than make sure that the display color is white. Maybe it's gray or something that maybe that's important. Maybe it's not. Um, but there, let's say there is a page like your about page and you, you're going in. There's no coverage anywhere. You have your about page and then you have your checkout page. And getting coverage on your about page is great, but um, the the percentage percentage increases on the about page for your coverage report are going to increase your coverage just as much as if you were to put that coverage um, work into the checkout page. But one of those is more important than the other. So getting your coverage increased in the checkout page is way more important than the about page and your coverage report can't tell you that it can't uh, give you that idea of okay we are covering the most important stuff in our app it's just telling you the overall coverage of your app now in my course i show you how you can set coverage thresholds so that your build will break if your coverage drops below a certain percentage uh, and that that can apply for your global coverage but jest also supports being able to uh, set coverage thresholds for specific files in your applications or um, uh, files that match a specific glob. So you could do all the files in, that are on the um, uh, on the checkout page, for example, or in this part of the file system. Those need to have like 90% code coverage, but in the about page that we can leave that at like 30% code coverage, not a big deal. Um, so uh, code coverage reports can't themselves tell you that, but you can kind of configure things a little bit so that um, you can enforce a certain amount of code coverage for the important parts of your code. Um, so taking a step back to the general idea of this video, why do I think that 100% code coverage is a sham and you shouldn't care so much about it? It's because um, code coverage doesn't tell you the whole story of the quality of your application. And that last 5%, the last 20% of code coverage uh, of work that you put into code coverage is the hardest part to get covered. And you often have to do some pretty weird things to get that coverage of that last 20% of your code. And um, it would, where your time could probably be better spent um, focusing on the areas of your code base that um, need to be refactored or need to make it easier to test or uh, what are, whatever uh, the case may be like, actually shipping features. And so um, I generally, like it really depends. And there's a fantastic talk um, that I'll share with you here. Let me just copy this um, and paste it in here. Uh, this is from Aaron Abramoff. Incidentally, he works at Facebook, but he's not related to Dan Abramoff. But um, he works on um, Jest on occasion. 
I think he's technically on the core team. But um, Aaron gave this talk at AssertJS earlier this year, establishing testing patterns with software and design principles. And right at the very, very beginning of the talk, he talks about testing ROI and how the time spent writing tests and the code coverage has a graph that looks like this. I don't know. That's not a logarithmic. It's, I, I, I don't know. I don't ever use those math terms anymore. But anyway, it um, over time, you get less and less code coverage um, the more time that you spend writing tests. Like that first test that you write, you get a ton of code coverage. You just literally require a file that requires many other files, and you get a bunch of code coverage from that. So uh, what he asserts is that um, in your... Um, like as you spend more and more time writing tests, the return on that investment goes down generally. Um, like if you're spending time writing tests for a very important piece of your software, then that return on that investment is is more valuable. Um, so what he says is, hey, let's do let's find a sweet spot here um, that really just depends on your application. Like every app is yeah, every project is different. Um, uh, like you, if, if you're a, a bank and you have some like regulations or something, then maybe, yeah, it's really important. Or, or if you um, are some uh, software as a service, you promise five nines of uptime. Yeah, maybe making sure that um, you can recover from failure really quickly is a really important thing to test. Um, but if you're an internal project and, um, you know, or, or just like a side project or something, yeah, totally like you don't, your, your code coverage, maybe 30% is fine. Um, so it really kind of depends, but I, I would assert that 100% code coverage is not useful at all. Um, pretty much for any project, uh, you, you'll wind up wasting a fair amount of your time. So, okay, cool. Let me turn over to see if there are any questions, if anybody has questions about what I've been saying, and then I'll wrap things up. Uh, oh, and if you want to, sorry, before I do that, if you want to check out the um, code coverage um, report that I was showing you, then let me give you a link to that Elka report. There we go. Sweet. Um, so I just barely deployed this. And you can go check out that code coverage report, like look around at, at things. Um, and if you remove that uh, code coverage report thing, then you can see the calculator which was actually created by Mike, Michael Jackson, but he gave me permission to use it in my course. Just very kind of him, cool person. Okay, cool. So let me check out the questions. Um, okay, do, 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 do. Some people excited about the course. Thank you, I am too. Um, You can make 100% coverage of relevant and say what is relevant code. So SwiftCut, I am not sure I follow what you're suggesting. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, we got Paul makes me feel good about my side projects with 39% code coverage. Yeah, yeah, good. Uh, one thing that I failed to mention is all of my open source projects, like my open source modules, like Downshift, for example, um, all of these have 100% code coverage. All of these are using my KCD scripts uh, project and it enforces 100% code coverage. So if you look, you all always see a badge that says coverage 100%. So um, that's why the title of this video is specific about apps um, because like in applications, 100% code coverage is not useful, but in reusable, reusable modules, um, getting 100% code coverage is um, is not only a really great idea, but also uh, generally a lot easier than in applications. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I I think it's it's important because these modules are going to be used in many projects, and so I I'd, I'd suggest that this code is actually very important code, um, and then it's actually a lot easier to get 100% code coverage because uh, they're isolated, they're um, uh, and they're generally smaller. And so, yeah, on my open source projects, I definitely uh, recommend and, and do have 100% code coverage. Um, okay. <coughs> I think we got a question here. <coughs> Sometimes it's really hard to figure out what um, to test for a function. Do you have any guideline of what part of a function should be tested? 
Uh, that's a great question. I cannot pronounce your name because it uses characters that I don't know. But um, yeah, so the um, the way that I think about it is um, if I'm looking at some code and I say, okay, I need to test this code, it's untested, then I'm going to um, not think about the code, I'm going to think about the use cases. Because if you think about the code, you wind up writing tests that are implementation details uh, focused. It's like, oh, I've got an if statement here, so I gotta write a test that runs this if statement. Don't, don't think about that. Think about why does that if statement exist? It's for this edge case. Okay, so let's, let's write a test for that edge case. Um, and th thinking about things that way will help you write better tests. Um, and like try to think from the outside in where you're you're thinking okay um, i have some code that needs to be tested uh, or or some use cases that i don't want to have break and th that's where you focus your tests on so try try to avoid looking at the code even um just uh, unless it's code you're unfamiliar with then you got to learn what it's actually doing what its purpose is but um think more about the use cases of that function and test for those your test titles should be use cases not um, not specific uh, implementation detail. Um, let's see. So Mark is suggesting that he, um, he likes to set the threshold to 100% but selectively ignore certain files that are pointless or difficult to test. That prevents the amount of untested code growing in proportion to code size. Um, uh, I can I can sort of sympathize with that. I, I wouldn't personally do that. Um, because I, I feel like uh, on a team, people would just like automatically um, build into their habits of disabling um, code coverage for files. Um, so now I, I uh, that would give me a false sense of security to say, oh yeah, we're 100% covered, uh, except for this and that and the other. And, and it would be hard to identify, okay, what parts are actually not covered because the coverage report won't, won't show, to, show you that. Um, yeah, yeah, and that um, Buckscar um, suggested the same thing. Okay, cool. I'm gonna jump out. Um, this was fun. Join me tomorrow. Uh, what are we gonna talk about tomorrow? Um, we go to KCD IM Dev Tips. I'll paste that in here. That's the whole playlist, um, and I've got all of my Dev Tips scheduled for the next couple weeks. Um, oh yeah, tomorrow is the Q and A. So you definitely want to show up tomorrow. We'll talk. Eh, I'll answer any questions that you have about testing in general at all. So uh, tune in tomorrow. Tell your friends. It's going to be fun. And um, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, actually, Devin, that's a perfect question. He was asking about, um, he or she, sorry, uh, was asking about, um, I should just say they, uh, Babel macro. Um, if there's like a Babel macro that strips data test IDs for production, Ask me that tomorrow because uh, I do have a great answer for that. Okay, cool. I'm going to peace out. I hope you have an awesome day. And uh, yeah, if you're not signed up for, um, for this, go ahead and sign up because it's going to be great. I'll see you later.